All right, let's welcome Belinda to the stage, everybody. Belinda. Oh, and I have your mic, so there should be a mic one running around. Could somebody run that up here? <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is Belinda. Oh, I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourself, but I think I kind of did that for you. So here, let me move this out of your way. My name is Belinda Charlin. Thank you. Hi, Belinda. Hello. Belinda, um, tell us how long you've been at Living Word. Hey, I've been coming to Living Word for six years. That's when we were in Phoenix, Arizona. Awesome. So Six Since years. We got here. Awesome. And what area are you serving in currently? I am in the first impressions team. Woo -woo! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what do you do with this uh, first impressions team? Okay, first impressions team. We greet all the newcomers coming in, make them feel welcome. Yes. Um, make them enjoy their time at church. And they make your coffee. And make your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. And what position do you serve in? Okay, right now I'm learning with Yvette at the front desk. So I, I think I heard that she is officially a service coordinator. Right. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> in We're training right that. now. That's all right, in training, you're going to get, you're going to be awesome. So I know you have an amazing story of, of what serving has done for you um, personally, as well as just in the area that you're serving in. And I would love if you would share that with us tonight. I'll give you a little bit of history so you understand how it works into the First Impressions team. So my husband was the first one to sign up to be a greeter. And that's when I was going through cancer treatments. I had been diagnosed with an aggressive breast cancer. And I was living in fear. And so we were coming to the church. Pastor Micah was praying for us. The church was praying for us. We really got into the word and I had listened to what doctors told me and how long I had to live and what everybody in the world was telling you of everybody they know that has died. And I come to church and I hear the opposite. It's like, by his stripes you are healed. And, you know, you read the Bible and you believe and you trust in God and it will be done. And so we both started reading the Bible more and more and getting in the word. And then, you know, he was coming in and greeting and I'm a very private person. I don't tell my personal life to anybody, but my husband tells everybody. <laughs> so if you want to know any of my journey, this is like out of the ordinary for me to tell it. You ask him and he'll tell you the whole story. So <laughs> he became a greeter and he was sharing my story with everybody and getting prayers. And, and I came in and I would walk in those doors and the greeters were amazing. The amount of love that I felt and the hugs and just welcoming and then I came to Tony, and Tony's like, oh, you know, you want to be a greeter too? And I'm like, yes, I do, because I used to be a greeter years ago at another church, and I'm like, I want to be a greeter. Can I be a greeter? And she's giving me hugs and making me feel like I'm a part of the team already. And then, you know, the more I get to know people, the more I can see it, that that love shows on everybody that comes in those doors. Anybody that comes in, they're immediately greeted. They make them feel welcome. And one of the people that really had an impact on me was Yvette right here because <laughs> Yvette knew I was going through a hard time and every time I came in that door don't you make me cry <laughs> I'll cry with you I told you I promise if you cry I'll cry with don't, you so you I'm not gonna yourself. cry you're not okay cry. all right okay <laughs> so we're good <laughs> we're good I don't like to get emotional but Yvette would come up to me and just wrap her arms around me and I try not to be a complainer I try to be upbeat and she'd just hug me hold me really tight and she'd tell me you know you look beautiful, and I'm so happy you're here. And she was so uplifting every single Sunday. And then I would go in and have a surgery, go into the hospital. And then I get texts on my phone from Yvette. I'm checking up on you. I want to see how you're doing. So she was always following up. And I don't even know if I was a greeter at that point yet. And so she keeps texting me, you know, I'm at home. How are you doing? Are you okay? And then I'm like, okay, I want to be a part of this. I don't want to put all of my energy into feeling sorry for myself. And I start reading the Bible more. And my husband and I are reading Psalm 91. And it's like, by, you know, it's saying that, you know, you are healed and, you know, God has got you. And so I asked God to heal me. And my husband would still beg, God, please heal my wife. And I said, no, don't beg. Say thank you. It is done. 
And so, you know, several more treatments went through. I'm not saying it was an easy journey, but, you know, over time, every time I go into the oncologist, they're like, we don't see any cancer. It just stopped. They took out what they could, and it started to grow and spread, and then it just came to a stop. And I believe the word. I believe it. I don't even question God. It's like, you say I'm healed, I'm healed. I don't care what the doctors say. I know I'm healed. And so that's why the first impressions team had a huge, huge impact on me because I'm coming in and I'm getting all that love from all these women. And they're just welcoming me and they know what I'm going through and they're just, you know, giving me hugs. So, you know, if you see me come in the door and I'm grabbing everybody and I'm hugging them, I've never been a hugger before I got here. And it's like, I got to have hugs. And now I got to, and now I got to share it. And then Sheila down here, that is a prayer warrior right there. Sheila is like, she's got my back too. And she sends me inspirational messages every day, scripture, and it's very uplifting. And then I had told her I had to go in for a biopsy. She picks up the phone and she's like, Belinda, I'm going to pray for you right now. And she prays for me. And, and with Yvette and Sheila both, if I mention something that I, you know, I'm feeling a little weak or I'm down, they will reprimand me. They will correct me. And they'll say, we're doing it in love. <laughs> in love. In, in love. love. In love. And I know they are. I know they're both doing it in love. And every single woman on this inspiration team, the first impressions are very inspirational. And any men that served on there too, as well as my husband. You know, he's always at that front door grabbing all the people and you gotta come to the men's meetup and you know, he's <laughs> trying to get all the men in with Jody and you know, it's it's just been an amazing, amazing journey and it's you know, it's been very inspirational for me. And that's why I wanna be able to learn more with Yvette and Tony, and I want to be able to give back because I know what it feels like to come in that door and be in fear. And there's so many people out there that are going through so much that you don't know about. And when you just show the love of Jesus, when they come in that door, they, it's like they know they belong here, you know. And so that's my testimony, and that's my first impressions, team. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much thank for sharing. You. And how cool is, is all that God has done in your life? God has done amazing yeah. things in my life. But you got to believe sure. it. Absolutely. You have got to believe. Yes. And yes. so now my next journey, and I think Yvette's kind of reminded me that I need to give more testimonies That's and right. share with more people That's because right. God is real and he's yeah. there. And, yeah. And he will take care of things. That's awesome. So. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. with us. Thank you. Let's give Belinda a hand. And it's funny, you t you, you, the last thing that you just said, um, because the scripture that I have pulled up when my computer unlocks, because for some reason it locked, um, is that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And so, yes, share those testimonies. That's why we're also asking our congregation, share with us. But I'm going to take it in a different little context real quick. We're asking you to. What things are God, is God doing in your ministry? Because he is every single day, every single time that you serve. He is working in you and through you. We say it all the time, but he is. And it, it may seem little and insignificant, you know, or whatever. Write it down, like, so that you don't forget. So when we ask, you know, for the tell me something good, you, you're like, hey, let me tell you <laughs> the good thing that God's done in, in, my, in my department. Um, and let's brag on him because his word is true. And that testimony, it does something for all of us. I know that just encouraged all of us in this room as far as our serving. Serving is great and it's awesome. But there are times where we come in and maybe it's just not that day. <laughs> I mean, come on, let's just be transparent for a second. But, you know, this kind of stuff, it stirs us. You remind us, yes, that what we're doing here is not just to check off a checklist. You know, it's not just to, you know, whatever. But it, we're making a difference. You're right. People are coming in with so much. We have no idea. Um, so I want to encourage you um, to write it down. Think of the things that God has done over the past year. Um, and by the time that we get to the end of 2023, I mean, maybe we'll take up the whole, you know, the whole leadership dinner, just talk about the good things God has done. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, but thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. I grab my water. All right. So welcome to leadership dinner, the first leadership dinner of 
2023. Belinda, I have your glasses, and I don't know if you're going to need them. Um, It's hard to believe that it is already the end of the very first month of this brand new year, right? It's kind of crazy, Um, but here we are. And so we're just going to, tonight, I'm going to, I have the opportunity to share with you guys, and I'm so super excited about that. And um, I'm going to go ahead and give you like a little heads up real quick. I'm going to teach in a minute. Um, but what I really felt led to do tonight is um, is just reserve some time at the end of my teaching for us as department heads to be able to minister to you as leaders. And so we're going to have a prayer time at the end. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what you have to pray for, obviously. But I do want to encourage you that this this moment it's for you. And so as we begin to pray for you and, and as a, your department head, this isn't necessarily the 10 different volunteers that have requests on your team. This is how, how can we minister to you tonight? Because I know what it's like. You come in and you serve and you lead. And sometimes you don't always get the opportunity for somebody to pray for you. And you're our, le- you're our leaders. You're the ones on the front lines with us, serving side by side, right? So we just want to take some time at the, at the end of, of the message, and we're just going to do that. So I want to give you that heads up so that you're not like, you know, when somebody's like, how can I pray for you? You're like, um, I know there's something. <laughs> um, but no, for real. Like, so just kind of be letting that. Be, and you don't have to make something up or you don't have anything. That's fine. Um, that's what the Holy Spirit's for. And um, so I just want to take that time. But I Again, I wanted to give you that heads up. So, it's the first leadership dinner of 2023. And last year, um, we spent a lot of time talking about the practical things, right? And reminding ourselves as leaders of the things that we need, the tools that we need to be, to be good leaders, to be efficient leaders. Things like caring for your team, not just on Sunday. <laughs> things like that. Um, giving and receiving feedback. That's always a little bit of a stretch, I think, for some of us, right? And then everybody's favorite, how to handle conflict. We dealt with that. (laughs) We're walking through it in this series in a different way. Sunday confirmations, woo, and how to follow up with those. Those are some of the things that, that we reviewed and went over last year. And so tonight, I'm going to take a little bit of a different spin um, because we need all those things. Um, we need to be able to care for our team and to be reminded, oh, yeah, how to do that and um, the tools and to be able to lead our teams well and to follow the checklist and, and to do all the stuff. And, you know, it's, it's really easy on Sunday mornings. We come in, we grab that checklist, we start doing, 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 doing all the things, right? And before you know it, service has started and we're just running around doing all the things. And before you know it, service is done and then we go about our way. And that's good, and that's important, and that we need that. We can't do the ministry without all of those things, those processes. But also, the thing that I felt like for tonight anyway, to, to really lean into, was the phrase, this phrase, don't miss his presence. Several months ago, I was prepping for Sunday morning, and um, I, was, I have a certain little process in my little quiet time of what I pray for and how I pray for it. And I look through the agenda and I look through the transitions and I look through all the things and I pray over those things. And I was kind of going through it. I haven't even left my house. I don't even think my makeup is on yet. <laughs> um, and I'm already like in that frame of mind of all the things that need to happen when I get there. And I felt the Holy Spirit gently say, don't miss my presence. And I stopped. <laughs> And so tonight, I want to ask the question for us to ask ourselves as leaders. Are we missing his presence? Is our team missing his presence? As the worship pastor, my team, we talk about this a lot because literally our contribution to the morning service is to help create an atmosphere where his presence can be experienced. Like that is pretty much summed up in a sentence of what we are supposed to do. But... In that, his presence is not limited 
on Sunday mornings to the auditorium when the lights are just right and the haze is just right and that chord just hits right and all of that. that that's not, his presence isn't limited to that at all. And so as we think about that, his presence is found in the parking lot. It's found in every classroom. It's found in the hallways. It's found in that little back room back there that nobody really knows exists, that it runs the stream for the online congregation. His presence is there. I follow an account on Instagram called Raised to Stay, and she um, she's just got some really phenomenal things God is doing in her life, and as she shares different um, quotes, I guess like threads, you kind of scroll through them. It's like a little box, and it'll have this like quote, right? And um, she's just really been a blessing to me lately. And so I'm just going to take like this much of this really big quote because it really applied to here as I was thinking and praying through this. Some of our greatest ministry will happen in conversations in the parking lot between this, the stall and the bathroom even, picking up our kids from children's ministry. I'm going to add to her quote, grabbing a cup of free coffee, <laughs> playing pool, opening the door, you know, walk in the hall because you're doing that one last sweep. Everybody else has now gone into service, and you're just going to walk the hall one more time to make sure everything's good. And then there's that person that is sitting there that you feel drawn to talk to. His presence is in all that. And so what... What does the word say about his presence? I think that's a very valid question. <laughs> and so I'm just going gonna, gonna to go through some scriptures and just, they all have to do with his presence. Psalm 16, 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. There's joy in his presence. Now, not every Sunday morning or in between as we're prepping for Sunday morning is there always joy. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like when you get that, confirma- that, that decline of confirmation and it's like Saturday night at like 9 o'clock and you're like, now I need to fill that position. That might not be a joyful moment right then. <laughs> but his presence fills us with joy, right? So we're talking about the tangible things that we were just talking about with caring for our team or um, reaching out, do, um, you know, giving that feedback, um, rece- dealing with the conflicts that sometimes arise as leaders because it's part of the job, it's part of what we do. Those aren't always the most joyful times. And so we've got the tools and the steps and the processes and the people that, you know, have can help us, that we can lean on. Here, here's how you handle that, right? But there's the other side of that. That when we spend time in his presence, personally, and we allow him to fill us, then the Holy Spirit can lead us in how to deal with the conflict, right? Even if it may not be a joyful time. But in his presence, there's joy. Acts 3.19 says times of refreshing come in his presence. It's really, again, easy when we come in as leaders and we get busy and we're started with all of our stuff and we're running around that maybe at the end of the Sunday that we've served, refreshment not, might not always be the number one thing that comes to our mind. But as we're serving, we can be refreshed in that. And I think back, you know, to Jesus. and He's fully God, but yet he's fully human and he's hungry, Right. And he sends the disciples away to go get some food. And while he's waiting for them, which I know is totally a God setup, like he meets with the woman at the well. And we, we know that story. We're familiar with that story. Her life is forever changed. And she's probably one of the very first people that shared the gospel and changed all of history. But when the disciples come back, he's like, yeah, I'm not hungry anymore, but thanks. <laughs> and they're thinking, what? <laughs> and he literally, and I'm paraphrasing all this, but obviously, but um, he's literally like, no, doing the work of the ministry, like, took care of that. I'm, I'm good now. <laughs> Even with us, like, sometimes we come in, and it's, you know, we're running, running, running. But even in that, as we're experiencing, as we're ministering, refreshing can come, and it does come. 
it does come. Psalms 84.10, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Wow. Just one day in his presence is better than basically anything else is what he's saying in this psalm. I love this passage passage of scripture, and I, I find myself going back to it a lot. And it's Exodus 33, 15. And as you're kind of reading the whole chapter, basically the context is that God is talking to Moses and he's telling him, hey, I want you to gather up all the people again <laughs> and I want you to go there. And he names the place. I don't know the place. And Moses' response was, which I feel is pretty bold. If your presence doesn't go with us, I don't want to go. Now, we have the advantage of something that Moses didn't have. We have the next scripture, which is Psalms 139.7, which says, where can I go from your spirit and where can I go from your presence? Because we now know his presence dwells everywhere and in us, like we take it. But of course, God, going back to Moses for a second, God is gracious and says, of course, I'll go with you. I'll go before you. His presence goes with us, before us. There's nowhere that we can go that his presence is not. We carry it in us. What else isn't found in his presence? 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom in his presence. There's freedom for us in his presence. Personally, there's freedom for every person that comes in the door. Belinda was just talking about, we don't know what, what people are bringing in with them, but this is the place where they will be set free from whatever. So maybe you're asking, okay, great, I get it. You're talking about his presence. That's a lot of scripture, Kendall. (laughs) But maybe you're asking, what does this have to do with leadership? His presence has everything to do with leadership. We have to have the practical tools and the training and all the John Maxwell and all the Dean Radke and all of the insert the great leaders here. (laughs) We have to have all of that, but we also have to have his presence in us, around us, leading us as we lead. So don't become, and I'm talking to myself too, so busy doing all the right things on a Sunday or a Wednesday or whenever (laughs) that you totally miss out on his presence. This is a little side note, but I just threw it in my notes at the bottom, and I was like, I don't know. But I just feel like I'm just going to share it. We aren't only desired by God when we're useful to him, such as leading. God delights in us just for us, not just in the things that we produce, not just in the checklist that we turned in on time, not just in, oh, we made the huddle this time, not just in, oh, every single person confirmed. (laughs) He delights in us just because we're us. He's proud of you before you do or lead anything. And yet he calls us deeper. He's not disappointed in you. He's calling you higher. As leaders, it's a constant, right? He calls us up, and then we're in that season, and we're going along. And then he calls us up. (laughs) 2 Peter 1 and 3 says, His divine power has granted you all the things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. My version of that is he's already given us everything that we need to accomplish everything that he's called us to. And he's called every one of us in this room for this time with this team, with these people that are coming in these doors in this year. (laughs) All the people that came in today, he already knew. He ordered their steps. He ordered ours. And I love this promise 
in Matthew 5, 6, that those blessed are those that hunger and thirst because they will be filled. When we hunger for his presence, we don't have to search for it. We don't have to look hard. He's not playing hide and seek with us. It's, it's, it's a, as soon as we stop and we just acknowledge his presence, no matter where we are, he's there. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to work for it. So I just wanted to encourage all of us to run after his presence. Personally, run after it. It'll change your life personally. I know we know this, but vision leaks, so we're going to say it again. Run after his presence personally. When it comes to your ministry, spend time in his presence laying it down, because I promise it'll change that too. My kids, um, over the past 21 days, they have um, binge watched The Chosen. Um, If you haven't seen The Chosen, make time to watch it, because it's so good, so good. Season one's on Netflix and on Prime, (laughs) everything else on YouTube, Um, but it's so, so good. And I love the way that they depict um, just the different the, the different Bible accounts that we know and we love. And, of course, there is some liberty that they add to make the story move along and things like that. But the actual, like, biblical stuff that we've grown up hearing about. And I love um, the one that one of the ones that we just finished is the Bible account of when um, Jesus is on his way um, to... Darius has house to, to heal his daughter, to pray for his daughter. And um, the woman with the issue of blood, um, he heals her on the way, um, which are just amazing. And, and to see it, like, their depiction of it is just amazing. Uh, yeah, bring some tissues if you're like me. Okay, but the thing that really catch, caught my attention and my whole point of why am I talking about this is that when we read these accounts of um, Jesus and the crowds, right, and um, it's, it talks about all the people that would literally just follow him from town to town. Like they would just, they would hear he's going there and they would just all flock there. And in this particular account, you know, they're walking through these streets and we know the Bible story that, that is talking about, you know, the crowds are pushing in and the woman literally just reaches out and touches the hem of his garment and she's instantly healed. And he's like, who touched me? And his disciples are like, what are you talking about? All these people touched you. Um, but the whole reason for that, that I, the whole point that I'm trying to make is looking at, at the crowds, looking at, they had his physical presence there. And I think about, we don't see this obviously, but there were people there that did not stop what they were doing. They kept on. They all had issues in their life. They just hadn't had the revelation yet that he was the answer to it, or they totally would have been a part of that crowd. He was literally there, and they missed his presence. Almighty God, who literally, she didn't even touch him. She just touched the little fringe on his robe. Like, I mean, like, come on. (laughs) having no idea. I mean, Jerry's his, Darius' his daughter, like, he's, he, she's literally dead by the time, which, of course, Jesus is like, no, she's not. Y'all know the story. <laughs> but, um, but how many people missed out just because they weren't aware of the presence that they were in? And I never really thought of it before. But the way that the chosen totally, you know, it's like they're walking down the hallway. It's like that narrow, and there's so many people And that was the thing that as I was preparing that I thought of is I don't want to be that. I don't want to become so busy. And I have my own stuff, you know, that I miss it. It's literally part of my job to help create the, you know, place for people to experience their presence. I don't want to miss it. And when the Holy Spirit dropped that in my heart those few months ago, I literally kind of gasped out loud because I was like, you're right. Oh, my gosh. Like, I don't want to miss it. I had to repent. God, 
if I missed you before, like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, that's not, like, no, that's not my heart. And he knows that. That's why he gently was like, hey, just a reminder. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with all of us because it's easy for that to happen. So let's just, we're going to, I'm going to pray now, and they're going to start some worship music here in a minute. And then we're just going to kind of divide up. I know, I know we can kind of spread out a little bit and, um, and just spend some time with each other in our departments and just um, minister to each other for a moment. Just give your time, yourself time to receive. You pour out every week, every other week, whatever the schedule is. But just Heavenly Father, we love you. God, we thank you that your presence, God, is not hard to find. We thank you, Father, that your promise of your presence, God, is freedom, it's refreshment, it's joy, and so much more. God, we thank you, Father, that we don't have to search hard to find you. God, you promised that if we search you, we would find you. Lord, you promised, God, that, Lord, if, we, if those that hunger and thirst shall be filled, and God, renew our hunger and our thirst for you. And God, even in those that, even if as we think that, that we've got it, God, make us even more hungry. Make us even more thirsty for more of you. God, forgive us for the times that, that maybe we missed out on you being in that moment, in that conversation, in that conflict even. God, I know that as the more time that we spend in your presence personally, the more we recognize it all around us. Lord, I thank you for these leaders I thank you, Father, for the time that they have poured in every week, faithfully leading. Thank you for the opportunity that we get to serve alongside each one of them. God, you see the things, Father, that they carry in their own hearts and in their own lives and in their own minds. And God, I just pray tonight, Father, that as we spend time with you here in this moment. That God, that that refreshment will just fill the room. That your refreshment will fill every heart. And God, even as we leave this place this week, and as we make your presence even more a priority, And we thank you for the 21 days, but God, we thank you it doesn't stop here. God, may it be the cry of our heart to seek you out. Father, as we come in next week to serve or the week after, God, may we be even more aware that your presence is here. As we check off the things on our checklist, as we text our teams, as we do all the admin stuff that comes with the job, how may we be reminded of your presence. Lord, as we have to make decisions for our teams, and sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're not, God, thank you, Father, that we can stop and spend time with you and that you lead us and you guide us. I thank you, Father, for what you have done in us and through us. But God, we thank you in advance for the things that you have yet to do, that we have yet to experience you do. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for your presence that's even here now. And we just give our time and our hearts to you in this moment. Let's just take a moment and kind of gather in our respective departments and department heads just as you feel led to pray for your leaders tonight um, 
Let's just let's just spend some time pouring in to them for the next few minutes and then I'll I'll come up and close us out. Okay?